I've been consistent in saying that the Democratic Party's anti-Russian hysteria is downright dangerous because the underlying implication of all this hysteria is that Donald Trump is working with the Kremlin at the behest of Vladimir Putin to execute pro-Russian policies in the United States. Now, if this were true, that would be treasonous. It would be hugely problematic. But the fact remains that we just don't have the evidence to validate all of their outrageous claims. And my opinion on this issue is dynamic. It's not static. I'm willing to change as the evidence becomes available. But as an American citizen, intelligence communities have not released this information for us to see. So I'm not even convinced that Russia did in fact hack into the DNC or John Podesta's emails, but if you can persuade me that that did happen, that doesn't erase the substance of what was found in those emails that showed how the DNC screwed over Bernie Sanders and his supporters. But nonetheless, even if you can prove the claims of Democrats right now, their behavior is still downright reckless. So all of this Russian hysteria began when the intelligence community claimed that Russians hacked into the emails of the DNC and John Podesta. Now, we haven't been able to see the evidence, but we're supposed to take them at their word. But the response to this alleged hacking of emails has been that it's tantamount to war, according to some Democrats. I'm not joking. And this wave of anti-Russian hysteria has quickly devolved into a new McCarthyism that's reminiscent of the Red Scare during the Cold War days. It's ridiculous. So, I mean, if Donald Trump and members of his cabinet met with the Russian ambassador, then investigated. I'm always going to come out on the side of more information and not less. However, I think that we can all probably conclude that it has something to do with oil, money, and corruption. Government officials do this all the time. In fact, we know that John Podesta's lobbying firm was actually hired by the biggest bank in Russia, so that way they could influence Hillary Clinton to end sanctions on Russia. But nobody's talking about that. However, out of the abundance of things that members of the Democratic Party establishment can actually attack Donald Trump for that would be legitimate, they're using this Russia debacle as the main attack on Donald Trump. Even the Washington Post said that he should denounce Vladimir Putin to prove that he's not a puppet. And if you've been watching Secular Talk, Kyle Kalinske talks about how Rachel Maddow literally said that if Donald Trump withdraws troops from the Russian border, then that means that Donald Trump is proving to be a puppet. This is part of the way that President Obama is leaving office, by pushing up all these deployments and getting all those troops there. And Russia hates it. But apparently, if Donald Trump does things to de-escalate, that makes him a puppet of Putin. So this rhetoric is incredibly dangerous, and now they're literally demonizing Donald Trump for policies towards Russia that President Obama maintained. So The Intercept explains, the controversy began in July when the Washington Post reported that the Trump campaign worked behind the scenes last week to make sure the new Republican platform won't call for giving weapons to Ukraine to fight Russian and rebel forces. Ever since then, Democrats have used this language change as evidence that Trump and his key advisors have sinister connections to Russians and corruptly do their bidding at the expense of American interests. This attempt to equate Trump's opposition to arming Ukraine with some sort of treasonous allegiance to Putin masks a rather critical fact, namely that the refusal to arm Ukraine with lethal weapons was one of Barack Obama's most steadfastly held policies. The GOP ultimately joined with the hawkish wing of the Democratic Party to demand that Obama provide Ukraine with lethal weapons to fight Russia, but Obama steadfastly refused, as the New York Times reported in March of 2015, President Obama is coming under increasing pressure from both parties and more officials inside his own government to send arms to the country, but he remains unconvinced that they would help. When Obama kept refusing, leaders of the two parties threatened to enact legislation forcing Obama to arm Ukraine. This is why it's so notable that Democrats, in the name of resistance, have aligned with neocons, CIA operatives, and former Bush officials, not because coalition should be avoided with the ideologically impure, but because it reveals much about the political and policy mindset they've adopted in the name of stopping Trump. They're attacking him on the grounds of insufficient nationalism, militarism, and aggression, equating a desire to avoid confrontation with Moscow as a form of treason, just like they did when they were the leading cold warriors. This is why they're finding such common cause with the nation's most bloodthirsty militarists, not because it's an alliance of convenience, but rather one of shared convictions. Indeed, long before Trump, neocons were planning a realignment with Democrats under a Clinton presidency. And the most ironic and overlooked aspect of this volatile spectacle is how much Democrats have to repudiate and demonize one of Obama's core foreign policy legacies while pretending that they're not doing that. Now, the reason why it's so important that we don't arm Ukrainian rebels 
rebels is because we don't want the situation in Ukraine to devolve into a proxy war between the US and Russia. That would be devastating. We have to be very careful. We have to tread lightly because even though it's the case that Russia does not have the military capacity that we have, they still have nuclear weapons and we don't want to cause a fight with a nuclear power. Now, this whole debacle has been worrisome to me because Donald Trump is a madman. So as they try to push Donald Trump and egg on Donald Trump to be more tough, we're beginning to see that all of this anti-Russia rhetoric really is having a dangerous impact on Donald Trump. Now, we got the first indication of this when it was revealed that Trump told Vladimir Putin on his first phone call with him that he does not want to remain a signatory to the START treaty, which was negotiated by President Obama and Vladimir Putin. So this treaty is important because it limits the nuclear stockpiles between both countries, but Trump basically told Putin to shove this deal up his ass on the call. That's devastating. Now, when it seemed like Trump would maintain the same stance towards Russia as Obama when it comes to arming the Ukrainians, he's now coming out on Twitter lambasting President Obama for how weak he was towards Russia, presumably to appease bloodthirsty neocons that want war with Russia. But that's not even the worst part. He recently selected a new NATO ambassador that's hell-bent on a proxy war with Russia. So The Intercept writes, President Trump has reportedly tapped as his ambassador to the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, a hawkish critic of Russia who wants the U.S. to arm Ukraine. It's the latest sign that the administration is reacting to criticism that it is too soft on Russia by pivoting to the other extreme. Richard Grenell is a former Bush-era U.S. spokesman at the United Nations who also served as a foreign policy spokesman for Romney's presidential campaign. Grenell said that Obama's belief that the U.S could support Ukraine but not antagonize Russia, represented a naive and dangerous worldview. In a Fox News op-ed, he proposed military escalation, offer advice and training to Ukraine, and sell it the lethal weapons required to contend with Russian armored personnel carriers, tanks, and missiles, he wrote, adding that the U.S. should also restart missile defense shield programs in Poland and the Czech Republic. Grenell also counseled Obama to leave direct military confrontation with Russia over Ukraine, quote, on the table. Again, NATO ambassador is someone who told Obama that he should not take military confrontation with Russia off the table. This is someone who is in favor of a new world war. He certainly wants a new Cold War, but he's indicated that he wants war with Russia. This is a direct result that the Democrats are having on Donald Trump. So they, they wanted him to be more tough. They wanted him to denounce Putin. They wanted him to do all this shit. And now they're seeing the dangerous impact that it's having, yet they're not stopping anytime soon. They are continuing to push Donald Trump on this stance. And it's getting to the point where I'm getting really worried. Donald Trump is unhinged. He makes hasty decisions. So, I mean, to all the Democrats who were pushing Donald Trump and egging him on, congratulations, you are now getting what you wish for. Support this podcast by joining the independent progressive media revolution today at humanistreport.com.